and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Welcome to the Parish Church of St. Augustine in North London for a programme of sacred music associated with Christmas. Half an hour of some of the most sublime choral music from the last thousand years, performed by Harry Christophers and his choir, The Sixteen. We have Renaissance polyphony from Giovanni Pierluigi de Palestrina and Thomas Louis de Victoria anonymous medieval carols and great Christmas music from composers as diverse as J.S. Bach, Felix Mendelssohn, Gustav Holst and William Walton. Some of these pieces were written to be performed as part of a church service, others are the more familiar carols, sung outside the church and sometimes disapproved of by the authorities. What they all have in common is that sense of Christmas as a profoundly special time of year. the medieval carol, Make We Joy. Italy is very much the cradle of sacred music, and Giovanni Pierluigi de Palestrina was the church's first great composer. He took his name from the hilltop town of Palestrina, just outside Rome, where he was born early in the 16th century. In his 50-year career, he wrote hundreds of polyphonic masses and motets for use in church worship, especially for the beautiful Santa Maria Maggiore in Rome where he sang as a boy and later served as choirmaster. His Christmas motet, Hodie Christus Natus Est, is a simple expression of seasonal joy for double choir, one with sopranos and one without. Today, Christ is born. Today, angels sing on earth.
while Palace genus motet is direct, joyfully expressive, his contemporary Victoria embraces a more mystical vision of the nativity. His motet, O Magnum Mysterium, O Great Mystery, is a meditation on the virgin birth inspired by St. Francis of Assisi's vision of Christmas. The Latin text, O Magnum Mysterium, set as a motet by the Renaissance priest and composer Thomas Luis de Victoria. Outside the church, a different tradition of Christmas music had established itself during the Middle Ages, the carol. The feast of Christmas must have come as a blessed relief during the long, harsh medieval winters. But although carols often have all the joy and merrymaking of the season, they still frequently contained fragments of church Latin, like our next song. In Dulce Jubilo, now sing with hearts aglow.
Now sing and be glad. In Dolce Jubilo inspired a massive body of music across Europe. Jazz Bach's chorale prelude on the subject and performed here at the Thomas Kircher in Leipzig is a traditional postlude to Christmas services. The rose is one of those medieval symbols, the significance of which is partly lost to us. But the rose appears in countless carols from the Middle Ages. There is no rose of such virtue as is the rose that bear Jesu, for in this rose contained was heaven and earth in little space. There is no rose, an anonymous medieval carol comparing the Virgin Mary to a rose. In the 20th century, many British composers returned to the Middle Ages for inspiration, leading William Walton to write his slightly quirky modernist update of the medieval carol, mixing two languages. Make we join now in this fest in quo Christus natus est. Oh, 
Our next song is the Victorian classic Hark the Herald Angels Sing. The tune was composed in 1840 by Felix Mendelssohn to commemorate the invention of printing. The words had been written a hundred years earlier as a Methodist hymn, Hark How All the Welkin Rings. In 1855, ten years after Mendelssohn's death, an enterprising organist called William Heyman Cummings brought the words, now modified to the more familiar Hark the Herald Angels Sing, together with Mendelssohn's tune to create a classic. One of my personal favourites is a carol set to music by the English composer Herbert Howells. A spotless rose is blowing, sprung from a tender root, of ancient seers foreshowing, of Jesse's promised root. Its fairest bud unfolds to light amid the cold, cold winter and in the dark midnight.
Davis singing the solo line from Herbert Howes's 1919 setting of A Spotless Rose. Howes grew up singing in the choir at Gloucester Cathedral, and a decade earlier, it was another Gloucestershire composer, Gustav Holst, who was to set Christina Rossetti's poem in The Bleak Midwinter to one of the most sweetly melancholic of all carol melodies, which he named Cranham, after the remote Cotswold village where his mother grew up and where she played the harmonium in the local church. Gustav Holst's In the Bleak Midwinter, bringing a taste of the snowy British weather to the traditional nativity scene. But whatever the setting, the core of the adoration in the stable remains consistent. Shepherds and their flocks, wise men bearing gifts, all focused on the Holy Mother and Child. Even the beasts of the field looking on. In the early 1960s, Peter Maxwell Davis chose to set the Latin text O Manu Mysterium, O oh, great mystery and wonderful sacrament, that beasts should see the newborn Lord lying in a manger.
Peter Maxwell Davis's setting made in the early 1960s of O Manu Mysterium. <laughs> On Christmas Eve in 1818 in Obendorf, a small village in the mountains to the north of Salzburg, a Christmas legend was created. The story is that the church organ was broken. The priest Josef Moore had written a nativity poem, Stille Nacht, and the local school teacher Franz Gruber was so inspired that he set it to a simple guitar melody that was finished in time for a performance at the Midnight Mass. A suitable ending for this special Christmas episode of Sacred Music. Thank you.